What's going on everybody? Welcome to this episode of the Beer Chasers. I'm Preston and today we're getting back into some home brewing. So I'm going to make an attempt at a Doppelbach. So I'm going to show you the recipe I came up with. We're going to show you the brew day. Then we're going to taste it, review it, see how it turned out. So uh, stick around, check it out. All right, so as I mentioned in the introduction, we're gonna be doing a Doppelbach today. So first things first, let's go over the uh, recipe. So to start, I'm gonna give you the percentages in the grain bill. I'm actually doing eight and a half gallons. I know some people do five, some people do 10, uh, and everybody's equipment's a little different, so I figured it'd be better if I just gave you the percentages. That way you can plug it into your, uh, your beer uh, recipe tool, and you could probably get a recipe a little closer than if I gave you like the pounds that I used and stuff like that. Uh, so to start things, um, very simple grain bill for the most part. Doppelbox, there's really no surprises, no gotchas here. Um, you're going to want some Munich malt. You're going to want some Pilsner, um, maybe a little bit of wheat to kind of thicken the body up a little bit. But other than that, it's really not shocking. You know, the, the star of this beer really is kind of the yeast and the lagering and getting it really uh, crisp and uh, clean. Uh, so what I came up with is um, I actually layered my Munich malt. So I, I considered going 100% Munich 2. I was thinking I wanted something really sweet, really malt forward, and Munich 2 would give you a little more bang for your buck in that department as, in regards to like Munich 1. But um, what I ended up doing was splitting them 50-50. So I used 30% Munich 1, 30% Munich 2. Um, I did this because as I was reading, I saw Munich 2 had a lot less diastatic power than Munich 1. And um, I just wanted to make sure that the, the beer kind of converted right. And I kind of like the idea of, of splitting it using 50-50, maybe adding a little bit of complexity. So even though we're not using like a ton of different malts, um, you know, using a couple different kinds of the same type of malt, maybe it add a little bit of complexity to the beer. So 30% Munich 1. 30% Munich 2. Probably no surprise to anybody here. The next one, uh, Pilsner. I went with 23% Pilsner. Uh, failed to mention here, I'm using everything Continental. I got everything Wireman that I physically could. Uh, so if you can, you know, I would definitely recommend getting a Continental, uh, you know, malts. You know, you're, you're doing a German style beer. You want to use the, uh, the malts that are uh, closer to the, the region that you're actually brewing in. Uh, I'm sure you could brew a Doppelback that's just fine with some American Pilsner or American Two Row, but um, I, I like to try to stick with tradition where I can. I just That's one less variable I have to worry about. Um, so I know when my German beer comes out tasting like a German beer, I, I'm hoping you know that the German malt helped a little bit. Uh, so yeah, 30% Munich 1, 30% Munich 2, 23% Pilsner. I mean, again, it's your, your base grain, you know, almost, almost 25% of it. Um, Next up, I used 10% Cara Munich. So, you know, instead of using like a Crystal 40 or a Crystal 80, I went with, you know, a, a Cara Munich. So you're kind of Crystal Munich. So again, we're, we're upping the, the, the sweetness of the, the beer. Uh, you know, Doppelbox are very sweet and malt four. So I thought Cara Munich would do nice. Um, the Cara Munich I picked up was 56 SRM. So um, a lot more um, SRM than the other grains. You know, the Munich 1 and Munich 2 are like 10 and 20 um, SRM. Pilsner somewhere down in the two or three or whatever. So this Cara Munich is our really first big hit of some nice dark colors. Um, Cause you know, Doppelbox have that nice approaching brown, red kind of nice darkness to it. Uh, then I did 6% flaked wheat. Uh, this was gonna be 415 SRM. I mainly did this um, just to in increase the body and the head a little bit. Um, you know, these, these beers are medium body. Um, uh, it, it came out to like three pounds in my use and 6%, you know, it's, it's not going to include a, like a lot of haze. It's already a dark beer. You're not going to see it. So I figured, um, you know, it's wheat. Wheat's kind of German beer, Doppelbox German. I'm using it such a small amount, you know, it's not really going to hurt much in there. Um, you're not going to taste a bunch of wheat and say, hey, I taste a lot of wheat in here uh, at 6%. So I added that to uh, increase the body a little bit. Um, and then I use 1% chocolate wheat. So just a little bit of chocolate wheat. Um, it, it's the more chocolatey of the, the roasted malts. Um, this is going to lend a lot of color. It was like 415 SRM or something like that, like really, really dark. So pretty much, um, you know, mostly for color, maybe just a little bit of background chocolate and that's it for the grain bill. So, I mean, you know, pretty, pretty straightforward. Munich malt, Pilsner, Acara Munich, so flake wheat for body and some chocolate malt for a little bit of color, just a little bit of extra sweetness in there. And that's pretty much it. Uh, for the hops, no surprise here if you watch anything I do, or any of the German beers I brew, stick very classic German noble hop, went with Hallertau. Um, I targeted 17.5 IBUs at the 60 minute introduction. So again, based on your system, you'll have to figure out and you know the alpha acids of the Haller Tower you get. These days it seems like they're around 2.75%. The ones I've been getting at least are really low. Um, but you know, you probably could bitter this with Magnum or something like that. Um, uh, but, you know, I, I like to try to use, you know, the, the German Noble, like, lower alpha acids, even the bitter, if I can get away with it. 
Uh, and then at 20 minutes, I added some more Howler towel to get 3.5 more IBUs uh, for a total of 21 IBUs. So that 3.5 at 20 minutes is going to give you a little bit of flavor, a little bit of um, aroma with that as well. You know, Doppel box aren't known to be very hop forward, so I just wanted just a, a touch in there. Just if you smelled it, you kind of get it, and it increased the flavor just a little bit. Uh, for the yeast, I went with WLP833. Um, this is, you know, one of the important parts of a Doppelbach. Um, looking at the yeast chart strains, this one was listed as like best for Doppelbach. So that's why I chose this one. Um, do be noted if you do attempt to do a Doppelbach as it's a lager, and this is a big, big beer. I mean, this is going to be coming in, you'll see here around 10%. Um, in a five gallon batch, you're going to need like 800 billion cells. I mean, you're going to have to create a yeast starter with like five liters, uh, two or three packets of yeast, depending on the health. So, I mean, this is a, a big, big beer. You need a big, big starter and it needs to be healthy to, um, not only chew through this, uh, the gravity, but also to, to last through the logger that you're going to be doing this beer. Uh, so um, for the mash schedule, I went ahead and actually did a, a decoction on this one. So I mashed in at a protein rest of 125. I decocted up to 155, and then I decocted up to 170 for a, a mash out. Um, some other nerd stuff here. we got the original gravity targeting 1.108. The final gravity targeting 1.031. If all goes well, 10.3%. Uh, so um, again, I think fairly straightforward. No real surprises here. If you ever looked at a Doppelbach, I mean, pretty classic. I'm not, I'm not adding you know anything too crazy to it. So um, I guess other than that, it's time to brew some beer. All right, so thanks to the magic of television and filming, we have the finished Doppelbach here in our hands. So we're gonna go for review. So uh, let's go through all the ratings here. Look at the appearance. Um, looks awesome. Uh, it's got that rubiness, um, red, little, little transparent, you know, but, but definitely approach not see-through. Um, had a nice uh, brownish head to it. Um, had, a, had a good bit on the pour there, but it's died down, but it's still appropriate, I think. Uh, half finger head. Uh, for the appearance, you mean, uh, I think it's too much better, so I'll, I'll go 4.75. I mean, maybe there's a little bit of room for improvement there, but uh looks great to me. The smell. Ah, man. Get a nice bit of malty, deep maltiness. Um, there's almost like some plum characteristics going on from the yeast. Um, man, it literally makes me water smelling this. Um, super happy, super stoked with the smell of this one. So um, on the smell, I'll go another... 4.75. I mean, I think it's. I think it smells great. Again, multi. Uh, it's literally making me water, so I'm ready to taste it. So the best part, the taste. Cheers. Ah, oh yeah, that's real good. Mmm. Just like the smell, big hits of like malt, um, plumminess. Um, Real sweet, almost like a hint of kind of raisiny kind of sweetness, a little bit of toast. Um, 
outstanding. I'm I'm super happy with this. Um, you know, I'm trying to trying to be you know subjective here. Uh, this is my beer, so it's easy to say, oh, I'm the best. But um, I'm really pleased with the way this came out. Um, for the taste, I'll go another 4.75. I mean, I think it's damn near perfect. You know, I don't, I don't know if I'd ever rate my beers at a five just because I, I feel kind of modest, I guess. So I, I guess um, 4.75 here is, is good for me. I mean, this is this is nice. This tastes just as good as any commercial uh, example I've ever had. And it really, um, I failed to mention, like you get a lot of the sweetness too on the, the, the follow-up and the breathe through, like just it really develops and kind of comes full circle. Man, that's nice. Uh, for the mouthfeel, I think it's it's spot on. It's it's medium, kind of a, approaching full bodied. Um, it lingers. It's not like a swallow and gone. You get some sweetness there, but it's not cloyingly sweet. So um, again, maybe a four point seven five. So overall, where is that going to put the uh, the Doppelbach, which I, I forgot to mention, I've named Prestonator. Uh, you know, in in the style of every Bach, uh, usually they end with the the letters A T O R. So you have like Celebrator and Optimator. Uh, and stuff like that. So I named mine the Prestonator. Seemed to, to roll off the tongue pretty well. Uh, so where does that put the Prestonator Doppelbach? Um, I guess at the 4.75, I mean, to me, it, it's pretty close to perfection. I'm not really sure um, what I would do to change this, you know? It, it's, it's, to me, exactly what I was going for. I think everything that I put in that grain bill um, is coming through in this beer. I think, you know, layering those Munichs kind of worked out for us, you know? Um, I'm not getting a ton of chocolate, which is good. I didn't want a chocolatey beer, but you are getting, you know, a, a little bit of that sweetness. Um, you know, the flaked wheat isn't noticeable. It looks like, you know, a pretty pretty clear beer to me. Um, so the flaked wheat didn't affect anything other than giving us some, some nice uh, body and head there. Um, the Caramunic, again, leading to the sweetness. And um, that the lager yeast, you know, we, we built a big, big starter. I mean, for me, I needed something like... Um, 900 billion cells or 950 billion cells and I made sure that the yeast was super healthy we put it on a starter and got a nice starter going and um, took care of it you know we lagered this beer for uh, three months after you know primary so it was about a month in primary then we switched over to secondary and lagered it for an additional three months and then you know it's bottle conditioned now for about six months so this beer is you know pretty much a year old um, and I'm happy to say you know I, I actually entered this into a homebrew competition uh, Florida's best beer uh, competition, the homebrew level, and I won silver with this. So, you know, not a gold medal, so I think maybe some room for improvement there. But um, you know, I medaled with this beer, so I'm super happy with it, and I'm I'm happy with the way it came out uh, personally. Um, so what would I do to improve this? I mean, really, there's not much. I mean, I, I think it could use a touch more body. Um, so maybe somewhere in the water profile, um, we can thicken the body up a little bit, or maybe just a touch more flaked ingredients. Um, Really, that's it. I mean, I, I have no complaints with this beer. There's nothing that's standing out that says, you know, yeah, I like this, but next time I'd rather do it like that. Um, it, it's it's perfect for me. And again, you know, everybody's palates are different. So, you know, you may brew this and you may not enjoy it, you know. If, um, but I think if you're a fan of Doppelbox, um, this one is not going to do you wrong. I, th I think it'll definitely put you in the ballpark of something you like. And then the next time you might, you know, put some special bee in it or something or, you know, some other ingredients. But um, for me... Perfect. I think I'd pretty much would brew this the same every time. So maybe we'll put some special B in there. Maybe some complexity with the Caramunic next time. Use some different Caramunics together instead of just the one. Um, but I'm not going to play with this one too much. Um, so yeah, there you go. That is the Prestonator Doppelbach. Again, super, super stoked with the way this one came out. No complaints. I'm very happy. I, I could easily say probably my best brewed beer yet. I mean, I'm, I'm super happy with this. And you know, the, the big thing at the end of the day is, like, I don't want the beer to taste homebrewed. You know, some people who, who brew your brew buddies, you know, they give you a beer and like, yeah, it tastes pretty good, but you can tell it's homebrewed. It's nothing you would pay 10 or 15 bucks for a six-pack on the shelf. Like, it's your buddy. You'll support him, and you'll definitely give him some feedback and say, hey, you know, I like that. Here's a couple of things you could tweak. But to me, this is, like, commercial quality, and that, that pumps me up. Uh, makes me excited to brew the next one. Um, a, a little side bonus, and I'll probably show you here in, in a bonus footage, um, I actually also do a version of this on top of pecans and vanilla beans. So there was a beer that Cigar City and Terrapin collaborated on called Southern Slice. It was a one and done thing. Loved that beer so much that I wanted to try to replicate it. So part of the motivation of doing this Doppelbach was to get a good Doppelbach base so I could make the Southern Slice. Um, so I did soak some of these on pecans and vanilla beans for some additional time. So I think in a little mini sod we'll crack that one open and see how that one did. But uh, this one right here, just a plain Jane version, your regular Doppelbach. Straight classic, again, German malts, German hops, German yeast, 
German brewing with decoctions, German uh, lagering. You know, I did everything as classic as I possibly could, and uh, I think the results show. So, awesome. Well, that's going to wrap it up. I'm Preston. This is the Beer Chasers. We'll see you later. Beer is good. Beer is good. Beer is good. And some. Beer is good. Beer is good. Beer is good. Let's go drink some beer.